Hi, Noah here. Today we're going to continue the three-part series that we started last week called Don't Let Your Feelings Kill You. Because don't you agree? You can have it all. You can have the perfect body, the riches, the career, the work, the family, the friends. You can have it all. But if you feel bad, worried, stressed, if you have depression, anxiety, it doesn't matter what you have. But it all comes down to how you feel on a daily basis. And last week we talked about what feelings are, how they come to be, how they are created. Because many, many of us, we think that feelings come from the outside, something, it's like a virus beyond our control that jumps on us and suddenly we feel bad and it's nothing we can do about it. I'm just stressed, worried, and that's just the way it is. Me, for example, I used to think that feelings were beyond my control. I would wake up in the morning and I would feel bad and I thought, hey, this is a bad day. I hope tonight will be better. And I was walking around hoping something fun would happen so I could become happy or that I would you know, hope people would treat me good so I could feel good. I was a victim of circumstances, but that was before I realized that feelings does not come from the outside. They come from the inside. And it's a process that we can take control over if we want. We don't have to. That, that's completely okay. But if we want to learn to use our feeling, is it possible? I believe it is. So make sure you watch this clip before you continue. This week, we're going to go practical. How do we create feelings? How can we manage our feelings, start using our feelings instead of being used by them? If we keep the illusion that feelings are beyond our control, guess what? Your life experience will be not so good because then you're a victim. You're a victim to whatever happens to you. And that is the result of us forgetting that feelings are really the result of two things, our focus and our physiology. How do most of us people deal with stress, anxiety, and worry? We're using Netflix, we're using food, drugs, shopping, alcohol. But what are we really doing? We're changing our focus and we're changing our physio physiology, how we use our body because that creates biochemistry in our body. But today we're gonna to talk about focus. You know what the problem is today? Why people feel so bad? Why we have all those feelings like stress and anxiety and depression? It's because we have given away the most valuable possession that we have, and that is our focus. We have become animals of reaction. Whatever happens, get our attention, gets our focus. So we're distracted by our emails our phones, our, all the demands at work. We want to be a great husband, a great wife, and we want to be the most handsome guy at the bar. We have all those things that are capturing our focus, all the social media channels, everything. We even have iWatches now that tells us, look at me, look at me, look at me. At the same time, we have to deal with the world economy and terrorism, and we get worried and frustrated, and we don't know what to do. Why? Because we let our focus be all over the place. Right now, for example, you, while you are listening to me, you could be focusing on a million things. You could be focusing on, you know, the clothes against your skin or the blood running in your eardrum or the lions in the savannah, the crocodiles in the Amazon or candy for what it's worth. But you are a choice and whatever you focus on, you will feel. But so few of us really take charge of our focus and that comes with great consequences. Bad feelings comes from bad focus. The quality of your life is the quality of your focus. Both you and I know that we can't control everything that is happening to us in our lives. You know, the economy will crash again, disease will be there, and we might not be able to control that. But in those situations, we are still at choice because we can always decide what to focus on. One example of that is my dear friend Elisa Lindquist. You know, you've seen her if you followed my clips. She is past 80 years old now, but she was raped the first time when she was four. She spent her whole life, you know, as a prostitute. She was abused physically and mentally. She's been a drug addict, you know, all that. But what is she doing today? She is a winner. She's fighting for other people. She's grateful. She's just happy and giving her love. And how is that even possible? Well, she does not focus on the past, all the bad things that have happened, everything that was taken from her. No, she is focusing on everything that has been given her. 
a second chance. She's focusing on the love of God that she has received and that she now can give to others. She's focusing on everything that she can do. She's focusing on everything that she's in control of and that she can contribute with. So Elisa Lindquist is a practical example on it's not what happens to us that determine the quality of our lives, but what we focus on. So what if we don't retake our focus? What if we get lost in all these distractions, on all of these things that are happening to us? We will be lost. To make this practical and make it really personal to you, I want to ask you, do you have an area where you feel stressed? Where you feel bad? I mean, genuinely stressed. Do you have an area like that? My question to you is, what do you focus on? What do you have to focus on within that area in order to feel stressed? Do you focus on what you don't have or what you have? Do you focus on what is missing? Do you focus on what, on what you can't control? Do you focus on something bad that had happened in the past or something bad that can happen in the future? Right? It's all a matter of focus. If you focus on what is missing, if you focus on what you can't control or something bad that eventually can happen, you will feel bad, but it's all a matter of focus. And as Tony Robbins, you know, the life strategists say, where focus goes, your energy flows. So where do you want your energy to flow? It will determine the whole game. The greatest gift, my friend, that you can give yourself, you know what that is? That is to reclaim your focus and decide to not be an animal of reaction, but say, hey, I'm gonna own my focus. I'm not gonna be distracted. I'm not gonna fall into that trap. A lot of people ask me and say, hey Noah, so you don't ever feel bad? Of course I do, look at me. I'm not an alien, I'm a human being. I have feelings, right? But here's the difference. I decide to not stay there. I decide to not stay there. And this is not just some positive thinking. This is understanding that focus is a muscle, but it needs to be exercised, right? So no matter what happens in our lives, we need to just take a break and be like, okay, I can choose to focus on what I'm missing here or what I can't control or everything that is happening to me. I can that. Taking big words in my mouth right now, the problem is in society is that we have a really weak focus muscle. Our focus muscle is so weak. Our stress muscle is very strong because we work in it every day. We're working it, we're working it. Oh, I'm so stressed, all of this, I have to do it. I can't control my boss, my demands, blah, 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 everything, right? But if we just paused for one second and realized the quality of your life is the quality of your focus, then we realize how important it is to be the owner, take ownership of our own focus and don't let everything distract us. Let us steal the most valuable possession that we have. So let me finish with this. A healthy life comes not from things getting better, life becoming more beautiful or wonderful. No, it starts with you and I exercising our focus muscle, not focusing on what is missing, what we can't do, what we can't control, everything bad that has happened to us. No, it starts with us deciding, hey, no matter what happens, I'm gonna focus on, on what I have, what I'm grateful for, what I want more of, what I can do for others and for myself, right? Then things will start happening. Because if we don't retake our focus, mark my word, you can have it all, the body, the riches, the career, the success, but if you don't have the feelings that you want more of, it won't be worth it. Both you and I know that this is not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. It demands exercise. Exercise is not easy. A lot of people, when they hear this, they feel exhausted and tired and they'd be like, oh, what? You know, it's up to me. I'm responsible for my own well-being." But if you turn it around, wouldn't it be so much harder if you had to change the whole world in order to feel good? That would have been exhausting because we don't have to change the world now. We just have to exercise and change our focus. There is no shortcuts here, but the solution to anxiety, depression, worry, stress, it's start exercising your focus, focusing on what you want more of, what you're grateful for, what you can do, and what you are in control over. And then you will see things happen. This was the second part of don't let your feelings kill you. Don't do it. Don't let them kill you. Use them. Become a user. Become master of your feelings. God did not create our feelings to kill us. He created them so we could use them as a source of power. 
But in order to do that, there are some simple steps that we need to start taking. But let's take them together. I'm here for you and you are there for me, right? We're in this together. So take a look at the exercises down below, three simple steps that you can start doing. But until next time, and the third part of this series, explore your potential and live to grow. <laughs>